Hey, I'm Chachi Averitt, and I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about Euro nymphing, high sticking, check nymphing. It's all the same thing. We're gonna break down some basics so that we can help you get on the water and have more opportunities to catch fish, in my opinion. So a big difference between types of rods, between like a Euro rod or check nymphing rod um, and a like traditional fly fishing casting rod is the way that the rod is balanced, the length, and then also the way that the reel seat screws down instead of up. So traditionally, when you are putting a reel on a rod for a traditional casting fly rod, your reel seat and it screws in, I'm oh, sorry, up from the bottom. Because of the length, you're trying to balance your rod when you're euro nymphing and so it puts the weight further towards the butt of the rod and on this rod especially it's really nice because they've included a rubber gasket in there so it really locks that reel in place there's a lot of rods on the market that don't have that you definitely want a rod that does because you're going to put a lot of torque on your rod you're going to put it it's going to be bumped a lot more than normal when you're euro nymphing because you're going to hold it a lot like that and so it's going to there's a chance of that coming unscrewed but with that rubber gasket in there big attention to detail from from moonshine on that so um so as you can see a lot of times when you're trying to balance a rod you're going to have your finger in here but here the balance point is going to be somewhere a little bit further down the cork because this is a 10 foot rod most euro rods are going to be from 10 feet to 10 and a half feet to 11 feet and then uh, there are some 11 and a half feet rod foot rods on the um on the market um, I personally am a, a 10 to 10 and a half foot preference guy. Um, I'm 6'5 though. It's just one of those things where I, I can already reach out there. If you're a shorter person, you might like a, a longer rod. Um, but me being 6'5, I've got enough reach. I can, I'm not trying to cast this thing a long distance. I'm trying to literally reach and touch different areas. So with a 10, 10 and a half foot rod, it's plenty. So one of the big advantages, because there's a lot of debate like Euronymphing or traditional fly casting, like, Euro nymphing gives you the opportunity to reach across creeks in tight areas where you can't get a good cast in. Um, but then it also it allows you to set your depth really quickly. So if I'm if I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of a dry dropper setup on a traditional rod. I love having a, a big chubby with a nymph underneath it and casting it into a pool and it get it. The problem is. Once I set that rig up, I can't adjust the depth as easily. So a Euro rod, I've got an indicator, and we'll talk through that a little bit, but I've got um, a setup to where literally by getting a little bit more line out, I can set the depth. And so I can go from fishing some 18 inch water to some six inch water to some a deep, deep run and not have to constantly re-rig. And so you see this used a lot in competition fly fishing for that reason. Um, now there's competition fly fishing for all different types, but most like small stream, small creek competitions are gonna have a bunch of guys Euro nymphing for that reason, because you can just change your depth so much. You also get a lot more passes by a fish. There've been many times where I can, I mean, you're small streams, so they're gonna be really crystal clear 90% of the time. And so I can see my fly go by over under left right whatever on a fish and i can adjust just a little like we're talking like that much will make the biggest difference in adjustment from catching big fish that have a lot of pressure on them so your euro rods they just allow you that euro nymphing setup just allows you to get multiple passes make the minor adjustments that makes the big difference in catching big fish one of the other big differences is the type of line you use on a euro rig um, today i'm using the airflow um, 60 millimeter it is their nymphing line. Um, the bigger differences you're gonna find in like a Euro nymph line is with your floating line, you've got this fat, you know, PVC or plastic or, or some kind of coating on the outside. With this, you've got, it's, it, you still have a coating, but it's very thin, and I'm gonna pull that out. I mean, it's a very fine line. Um, some of them have a little bit of metal mixed into them. Some of them have a braided cord. This one from Airflow, it's great. It's got a lot of touch, but it's, it's, got, a, it's got a power core and it's a super dry, meaning that um, some of the lines will absorb water. This one's like, no, this is it's, it's super sealed. So um, I'm using that kind of line today. Um, and the biggest difference is that we're not trying to get this line to float on the top of the water. Um, 
we want this line to honestly be something that we're using but as we kind of use it you it's rare that you'll get into your line a lot of times on this um, your, your leader is going to make up it's a longer leader and everything so um, a lot of times as well as you can see like my, my backing is orange their line is green but then here on the last I'm gonna go 10 feet maybe six feet is a colored line because the euro nymphing a lot of times with streamers and stuff like that you're going off feel euro nymphing is all sight based if you're doing it correctly so um, some people definitely there's there are times when a fish will eat and I did not see it but I'll feel it obviously because that's part of fishing but the ideal like correct way to do it is to use your vision to see your line go tight and I'll show you what I mean by that when we get on the water and do a little bit of instructional casting um, but it's super helpful when companies think ahead and don't just give you a lot of the companies on the on the market just to have green line with no colored in but airflow obviously not just guys sitting in an office guys who actually fish know that a colored line is going to help so super stoked to use this line today so the next to last piece of rigging your rod is setting up your leader setup as you can see here um i've got a hard to see it's it's a it's like a burgundy brown colored leader um they have a lot of leaders on the market right now um like when I got into Euro nymphing, you had to tie your own leader. So I bought a bunch of material and I started tying my own leaders. If you're new to the sport, don't do that. There's all kinds of equations that you have to figure out and all that stuff to know like how much of this section and that section. There are multiple companies right now that make a Euro nymphing leader. You can buy it off the shelf. It doesn't have knots that get caught in eyelets. It's smooth and tapered all the way out with the cider and everything built in. What I've done though, is I've tied some 20 pound to some 15 pound to some 12 pound to some 10 pound to some 8 pound to some 6 pound and then i've got this stuff right here that glows like a sun sunny morning you know it just it just shines really well in low light so this is what i'm gonna use this is called cider so it's part of your leader um, there's multiple companies that make cider material as well. Um, all of the big brands that you're thinking of when I say companies, they probably have them at this point because Euro nymphing has taken off um, pretty well. So, um, and then at the end of my cider, some people clip this really clean. Um, I like to leave it a little bit off. I'll clip that down a little bit, that's a little long, but I like it because it's just a little bit more indicator as far as how that's gonna work and show me when a fish bites. And then I've got um, I go from 2x to 4x and then I'll always I'll tie on to 5x tip it. A lot of your, your Euro lines now um, come with a flat end. This one has a loop so I'm actually going to do a loop to loop knot. Um, if you doesn't you can either tie a loop in it, I don't suggest that but it works. Um, or you can learn a nail knot. Um, it's a pretty difficult knot but it's, it's, it's definitely secure. Um, as I've been tying this leader, by the way, I've been using a blood knot. Some other people use a surgeon's or a double surgeon's or whatever, um, but blood knots are just, they're tighter, they don't budge, they don't slip or anything, and you don't want any slippage at all when you're urine nymphing because there's not a lot of grace for that um, in your line. So anyways. All right, how do we rig a Euro rod? Is it any different than a traditional fly fishing rod? It, it, it is in a couple of different ways. Um, one, um, your leader, obviously, like we were talking about, is going to be so long. Like I've got, that's a 10 foot rod and I've got about an 11 foot leader. Um, and that number of the leader, the length stops at the end of my cider. So that's not including how much clear tip that I've put on as well. Um, again, I'm going 4X to 5X tippet. Um, that is what I think is just a great standard. You can go all the way into, um, there's guys catching fish in the background, awesome. Um, there's, uh, you can go all the way down to, or up to 7X and it definitely matters more about how often is that river fished? How often, that's the same thing with any kind of tippet, just general information for you. Like the more pressure a river has, the, the higher the number. So obviously with tippet, your higher number means a smaller diameter of your of your um, your tippet. So I'm 5x. Um, the industry standard would be the 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 lowest number, highest number tippet you can go to is 7x. There's some companies that make 8x and all that, but anyways, for your and you never want to you don't want to go that low. Um, but anyway, so I'm throwing 5x. 
Um, I'm gonna show you how to attach flies to this line because it is a little different. So the, the flies that we're using in a Euro setup are gonna be barbless in most of your, your setups. So what that means is literally there's no barb on that. As you can see, it just comes to a point with a little bit of a curved edge, edge on it. And so most of the, the fly boxes I'll be using today have, have barbless flies. And so in your traditional setup, you would just tie your line, your tippet to the back of the hook shank and come off that way. But because it's barbless, there's nothing to keep that line from sliding off the front. And so because the tippet's gonna slide off the front, what we're gonna do is call a tag setup. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tie a double surgeon's knot, um, which is just basically two double overhands, but I'll show you. And you're gonna leave one of them long so that you can tie fly. So I'll have a fly tied off here, and I'll have a fly tied off here. All different kinds of opinions on knots and all that stuff. I'm trying to make this a basic, easy setup for you guys. So. Um, I'm going to leave this tag somewhere around four inches and to the next fly is somewhere around 12 inches, roughly. Don't measure it. It's not worth that. But to tie a surgeon's knot, pinch the lines together, overline them, which is also called a bite. And then we're going to pull all of this stuff through this loop two times. And then by grabbing this side and pinching the top of that loop, we're gonna pull that closed a little bit. And then you're gonna to need to moisten that spot because if you don't, this type of knot will actually, um, as you tighten it down, it'll take away the strength of this and you'll break off on this knot if you don't add moisture in there. So you can do it like that or like everybody else, we can just stick it in our mouth. So we tighten it down, pulling both sides, and they tighten into a nice knot. And so what I'll do from here is I will clip this top part that's just hanging out and leave the two places that I'm gonna tie my flies into. I don't know if you can see that in the background, but there's two lines coming down right there that I'll tie onto, so I'll clip that off real quick. So now I've got my cider to my 4X to my 5X, and I've tied another piece of 5X tip it off. So I've got that dropper and then this tag coming off the bottom. So in traditional fly fishing setup, there are a lot of different ideas on in the order of the flies, like should heaviest be on top, should what should be on top. Obviously, you're not gonna put a nymph ahead of a dry fly, that's pretty simple. But with Euro, the main thing is that you want your heaviest fly, if this is the way that you're gonna be fishing it, because this is from the cider down, you want your heaviest fly on your top tag. So if you're fishing barbless, you want it tagged off like this. If you're fishing barb, you always want your heaviest fly on top. If your heaviest fly is on bottom and they eat the light fly that's up top, what ends up happening is you won't feel it as fast. So you want your heavy fly up top so that when they eat that smaller fly on bottom or vice versa, you can feel it. Cause you'll never have a problem feeling the heaviest fly getting eaten. It's the smaller one you're trying to protect the, the touch of. So from there, when we're tying flies on, it's gonna be the normal knot that you tie on. The, 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 um, the clinch, the improved clinch, whatever you're comfortable with, I use the improved. Um, so there's nothing special about the way, the knot that you use to tie flies on. So I've got a bunch of different kinds. A lot of these rivers, when you're Euro nymphing, they're gonna be fish that are either highly pressured or stocked. And so I've got these silver beads for, for like dirty water that I'll throw in. So if it's been raining a lot and the water's kind of very turbid, I'll, I'll use that. But um, these beads that don't have a lot of flash on them are really productive when fish have been fished and like cast at a bunch. So once you get both of your flies tied in, there'll be these little tags that you'll wanna clip off right here. Obviously, like always, I don't think it actually matters in fish catching, but man, it looks prettier in photos um, if you make them look nice. And so what you'll have is two flies separate, but tied into the same line and about uh, 10 to 12 inches in between the flies. So 
let's 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 go hit the water. Let's talk about some on the water techniques here.